Good morning, everyone. And can I say, firstly, that I'm just so delighted to welcome you all here this morning. Um, as I, with my wife Trish, family and friends, launch my campaign to become President of Ireland. This morning I want to continue what I have been doing in communities all across this country over the last few weeks, and that is to outline my vision for the future of Ireland as President. The role of President, while enshrined in our Constitution, is one which has evolved over time. Ultimately, the President is the protector of the Constitution, but beyond that, the role is largely one of leadership. It is about setting an example, a tone, a value system for the country we are, and importantly, the country we want to become. As President, I am committed to following the example of past Presidents who have shaped the arc of Ireland's history. Mary Robinson awoke Ireland's social conscience and began a conversation on what it means for a country to be truly inclusive. Mary McAleese and her husband Martin set out to build bridges and to promote peace and tolerance within and between communities. She also helped unionists and nationalists alike understand their differences and celebrate common interests to further the progress of peace on our island. In their respective tenures, both presidents fulfilled their constitutional roles, but they also led with imagination to address the challenges of those times. As a country today, we stand on the foundation of a proud past, which gives us the ability to reimagine our future. In that context, in launching my campaign today, I am committed to putting my full self and the best of my abilities forward to make our communities and our country a better place for us all. I am committed to being a champion for an inclusive society where we respect ourselves and each other, where everyone has a responsibility to play their part. Most importantly, I am committed to help create a society where every person has the right to reach their full potential, regardless of their age, gender, creed, or ability. My story began in a small village in Cavan. My memory of primary school, my abiding memory of primary school, was one of fear. Fear because of a visual impairment I grew up with. My sight was poor. I couldn't read small print, so teachers thought that I was a slow learner. This was a time before we had educationalists, educational psychologists, before people really understood the challenges that a disability on a young person would have, not just on their educational performance, but on their self-esteem and self-confidence. While others went out to play during the break, because I couldn't see the blackboard, I would stand at the blackboard during those breaks to write down and transcribe what the teacher had written throughout the class. My fear being, as I listened to the other boys and girls play outside, hearing their laughter through the open window, would be that the teacher would come back early to wipe the board and all my day's learning gone. And I would never recover those because my classmates wanted their copy books to do their homework in the evenings. But more fundamentally, I did not have the confidence or the wherewithal to ask for help. And trapped in an environment that I couldn't leave, I had to find a way to overcome those challenges. And it was in overcoming those challenges and overcoming those obstacles that has led me to be the person I am today, that has given me the sense of determination, commitment, resolve, and resilience to now, with that empathy and that compassion and that understanding, to help work to make sure that nobody else has to go through the same challenges. It became apparent only recently when I stepped forward to seek a nomination. My very first council to address was in Leitrim. All my life I have avoided using scripts to speech because I use large print, large words on a page, 34 font, Arial, bold, and double-spaced. And when I turned up to Leitrim, I wanted to deliver a speech that I could deliver in each council 
accurately and with the same impact and the same message. And yet, when I arrived in Leitrim, I didn't have a podium in which I could hide my notes. I flicked through large numbers of pages of, far, of large print. And it dawned on me then, as I was nervous to do so, that if I didn't have the confidence now to do that, how would I clear a path for others if I was going to be an advocate, as I have been all my life, for those with disabilities? But in that chamber, the person who came to my mind most was not me but our two-year-old daughter, Lucy, who herself has the same congenital cataracts that I have grown up with. It is my responsibility now as a parent and as a leader to make sure that I do what I can to clear a path for her so that she no longer has to endure what I endured. In seeking the office of president, I want to be able to look back in seven years' time and be able to say, that I, along with others, have changed the public's perception towards those who have a disability, where we see not just the disability, but the ability. That we will have empowered every individual who has a disability to have the confidence in their right to live their life to the fullest of their potential, irrespective of their level of ability. And that Ireland would become a role model for other countries as to how to create an inclusive society, and one that celebrates difference. If I could have achieved that in a seven-year term, my journey and life would have been worthwhile. In this changing world, Ireland has always been a country, and we a people that have made an impact. We have contributed to the world through our creativity, our problem solving, and the skills of our young people. I have seen this in my time as a youth worker in mentoring young people, in my work in business, and in my work with communities across the country. When the president takes the oath of office, he or she commits to using his or her abilities to serve the people of Ireland. That's exactly what I want to do as president. I want to use my skills, my experience, and my energy to motivate people to create opportunities and to serve the people of Ireland. Because for me, that is what the role of the president is all about, service. I want to serve the people at home as a president with honor and with distinction, working with individuals, with community groups, and working with those who are making our society more inclusive. I want to serve our country with pride and dignity abroad, working to strengthen our, in our international relationships and serve as a calming voice in uncertain times. I also want to be a president who, as a head of state, celebrates the achievement of our people. Because when people feel acknowledged and recognized, they become more motivated than ever to continue working towards making our country a better place. Most of all, I want to be a president that is measured not on his words or promises, but on his actions. Over the course of this campaign, I have outlined time-specific special initiatives that I will launch in my first year of president. To date, these have focused on promoting the role of women in politics, climate change, the Irish language, and honoring our defense forces. In line with this commitment, next Monday, I will out announce and outline the details of 20 such special initiatives, which, if honored to be elected president, I will commence within the first 20 weeks of my presidency. These initiatives are centered on the five core values that have shaped my life and that will guide my campaign and my presidency if honored to be elected. These are respect, responsibility, community, trust, and inclusivity. The first of these values is respect. Respect for ourselves and respect for others. This is the true measure of our character as people, and as a country. With this in mind, I want to create an Ireland where we nurture the vulnerable in society and focus on the strengths of all citizens. I've always been passionate about self-determination, the idea that every person should feel respected and valued, and that they can live their life to the best of their ability. That is why, as president, I am committed to helping shape a society 
that respects all our citizens equally. The second value which has shaped my life from an early age is that of responsibility. The idea of leading by example, of knowing right from wrong, and believing that it is not our shortcomings that define us, but what we do in spite of them. As guardian of the constitution and head of state, I do want to lead by example. This starts with acknowledging that we all have a sense of duty to step forward and leave our country better than we found it. In this regard, my campaign has led by example so far by being carbon neutral and committing to having a carbon neutral office of the president by 2021. We have a responsibility to pass on this planet and this environment to do what we can to protect it so we pass it on to the next generation. I also want to encourage others to step forward to become leaders in their community. Many people will see me as just a businessman, but the diversity of my background extends to many other areas. I started my career in agriculture and farming. Before my involvement with Faroiga and Makra ignited in me a passion to address community needs as a professional youth worker. Working with the National Youth Council, for example, and collaborating with professionals and teachers across the country, we train more than 5,000 youth leaders to work with young people all across Ireland to help prevent the abuse of alcohol and to help promote self-esteem among our young people. Today, Trish and I have two beautiful children, Bobby and Lucy. And as a parent, I feel responsible to ensure that they and every single person in our country feels valued and encouraged to better our society. Every single one of us has something to contribute and something to offer. But most of us, but for most of us, we have a responsibility to discover where our strengths lie as individuals and to use these to better ourselves and to help better others. This is the essence of my presidency. This is the ethos that I want to foster as president. Growing up in a small village, as I did, I have seen firsthand the power of community and community spirit. I now want to use my presidency to empower others to step out and to serve in their communities. I started in Ballyhays in County Cavan, beautiful small rural village. I told the story in Galway yesterday that in 1979, I took, like many other young people, a trip on a bus to the Ballybrit race course in Galway to visit jo John Paul II. On the return trip home, 50 of us who shared that bus began to talk about what it would be like if we could create a sense of community by setting up a youth club. And the typical naysayers from the back of the bus shouted things like, we don't know anything about setting up a youth club. We don't have a hall in which to meet. No one's going to give us any money. Let's just forget about it. A few of us thought contrary. We imagined doing something for ourselves. We set up a youth club that became a Faroiga youth club. I was honored and blessed to become chairman at 17. I learned more through Faroiga in truth that has served my life than I learned in the formal education system. I learned how to speak in public, how to chair meetings, how to pull a group of people together to collaborate to achieve something that none of us could achieve on our own. In the knowledge that we support best that which we help to create. That sense of community, the, motive, the motivation of our young people, the impetus created, led to the building of a community centre in my home village of Ballyhays, where my father was on the first founding committee. We set up a senior citizens party at Christmas to honour our elders and our senior citizens, to bring them together, respect with music, with dance, with entertainment, with food, and most of all, to recognise their contribution to us and to our community. 20 years on, my own parents were the beneficiary of that very same senior citizens party. And I launched my campaign in Ballyhays, in that village, two weeks ago, surrounded by family and friends and neighbours, and the very people who inspired my sense of community and my commitment to that community and to the country, the very people who helped sow the seeds of why I'm standing in front of you today. 
This is a reminder to me of what can be achieved when we give people the courage to become leaders in our own communities. We must also realize that we are an island of communities. And I have repeatedly said that I believe we will see a united Ireland in my lifetime. I remember my first meeting with John Hume in 1985 when I heard him speak about difference, that difference was largely an accident of birth. That is why as president, I intend to build on the great work of Mary McAleese and her husband Martin, and I will work with government and community groups to continue to build those bridges. Partition has never served us well in the past, nor will it serve us well in the future. I, like many others, grew up in the reality of military checkpoints at the border amid a backdrop of conflict and challenge. In building on the progress we have made under the Good Friday Agreement, we must never return to the all too familiar sight of the barrel of a rifle at the intersection of two lands. We must continue to unite communities, both north and south, because it is only when we unite communities can we ever consider uniting territories. It is about building relationships that create the trust that is the foundation of any sense of unity. And trust is a value that has guided me throughout my life, but more importantly, it has been the foundation on which our very democracy is built. I have always been committed to not just doing things right, but to doing the right things. In this regard, I've endeavored to lead by example by making a voluntary disclosure to SIPO, our standards in public office. While it is not legally required, I believe that doing so is in the interest of transparency and befitting of the office of president. If elected head of state, I will acknowledge my responsibility to lead by example in setting benchmarks for such transparency and the appropriate use of public funds. That is why as president, I'm committed to ensuring that the expenditure of the president is open to the public and subject to proper scrutiny. In this regard, if honored to be elected, I would urge the government to carry out an annual audit of all expenditure associated with the office of the president. This is not about politics, but about doing the right thing, because after all, the office of the president belongs to the people of Ireland. Lastly, I believe we are strongest as a country when everyone feels included in our quest to make Ireland a better place. After all, we are a nation that knows too well what it feels like to be different in a foreign land. That the stories that have shaped our past and have allowed us to contribute to so many countries and communities across the globe. As president, I want to be cognizant of this past so that we welcome all identities to our society. We have so often championed the rights of others abroad, the right to asylum, the right to food, and the right to shelter. Here at home, however, we must continue to champion these rights for our own people and those whom we have welcomed from foreign shores. If elected president, I hope to work with all relevant agencies to create a more inclusive, more tolerant Ireland that celebrates the diversity of the nation we have become. In concluding, I want to reflect on the campaign so far. There is often an urge for many to engage in a politics and a commentary of negativity. But this is not what the people of Ireland deserve in choosing their next president. Cynicism does not create change. That is why my campaign will be a positive campaign focused on reimagining the future of our country. From growing up in a small village in Cavan to launching my campaign for presidency here today with you, my journey has been grounded and rooted in the values I have known all my life. These values of respect, of responsibility, of community, of trust and inclusivity. In looking to the future and to the next seven years, I want to lead a country that does not focus on the I or the me, but instead on us and we, on our responsibility to leave our country better than we found it. I will nurture a society that celebrates the strengths of our country and praises the achievements of all citizens. I will foster a spirit of self-determination among our people, 
listening to and working with every individual to help create a future we can all be proud of. I will work with our communities, fostering trust and inclusivity so that people feel empowered, empowered so that they can step forward and play their part based on their own unique talents and abilities. We are strongest when everyone has this spirit and I look forward to continuing this conversation with you and with the people of Ireland so that we can shape our future and shape our future together. Thank you.